Yeah, it does. So good to be here. Thanks, everybody. So, Paul, how about you? I'm Paul Marcovina. I'm the development officer for Marquette University, and I serve the Diedrich College of Communication and its dean, Sarah Feldner. And I also work closely with Joel and Dan and Sissy and um, others, I'm sure, who will be joining us tonight. It's nice to be here. It's my first visit. Thanks, John. Thanks for being here, Michael. We're going to get to you when we um, kick up the panel. Nawaz, you want to say hi? Uh, hi, I am Nawaz Qureshi. I got MBA from Marquette in uh, 1975, but I worked as an engineer with different companies, so now I am retired. But I loved Marquette. I remember wonderful times I had there. Such wonderful people you are. Nice to see you. So Keith Myers, you're next. Yeah, hi, John. Yeah, I, uh, actually, uh, I, I started in engineering at Marquette back in 55. I went in the Army, came back out, and went into Zad. And um, I started, uh, I did my master's also uh, kind of there and also USC. And um, kind of started mentoring um, people from communications uh, when I got into the media business back in the 80s. Um, and back then it was pretty informal. It was, you know, kind of like someone would call and say, hey, uh, we got so and so. Oh. Did you freeze? I think we you froze there, Keith. The media business back in the 80s. Um, oh. Back then it was pretty informal. It was, you know, kind of like someone would call and say, hey, uh, we got so and so. And uh, I've got this uh, a Mormon fellow that uh, that someone from Marquette referred him to me about eight or nine years ago, and he's not letting go of me. So um, uh, actually, I'm going over there. We're gonna we're gonna tour the federal parks uh, next week. But anyway, right. um, I enjoyed it. I, I've I've uh, was on three nonprofit boards, and I've I've stepped off of all of them. Um, one at a time over a period of about a year or so. And the last one I dropped out in uh, 2020. And uh, so I know I'm just kind of, I'm still uh, trying to stay a little bit active. You know, I just right. back from a well, let's get Let's get back to you and, at um, the uh, Q&A part of the show, okay? Yeah, I made Dan, 84 you're years old, so. Dan O'Keefe, are you uh, awake? Are you on mute? I, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hi, I'm Dan O'Keefe. I graduated from Marquette uh, in December of last year. I'm still in Milwaukee right now, but I do. I am moving to Los Angeles in August, which is an oh, wow. exciting life development. Um, I'm a writer and an actor and a game show host, what have you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And Mark, how about you? Hi everyone, I'm Mark Pintar. Uh, I do a few things. Uh, I work for E! Entertainment as an editor for the show called Daily Pop. And I also uh, work with a startup called The Safe Steps and we teach uh, human skills to high school students. So all the stuff that you don't get taught in school that really actually helps you get ahead in life. So that's what we are in the process of teaching to high school students around the country. That's great. Glad you're here. So, uh, Anthony, you want to tell us about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hey, what's going on? I'm Anthony Erdl. I uh, graduated Marquette in 2017. I just finished my MFA at Loyola Marymount in film production. Uh, I'm a producer. I've had a couple of films and some festival circuits. Uh, excited to meet some new faces. Well, thanks for being here. How about you, Sissy? Hi, I'm Sissy Bouchard, and uh, I broker dreams for Marquette, help people uh, make their philanthropic dreams come true at Marquette. Thanks. Glad to see you. Thanks for being here. And Erin, how are you? I'm good, muted? thanks. I'm, I'm good now. I'm good, thanks. So say hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Erin Doherty. I'm a uh, I graduate of uh, uh, arts and sciences in 91, so I'm not communications, um, but I, and I also received my JD in 2000, and I'm vice president of labor relations for NBC Universal Media. 
And we're going to talk to you on the panel. So thanks for being Correct. here. And Dan Fouts. Hey, everyone. I'm actually in, in Nashville now, um, but I, I went to Marquette Law, uh, graduate 04, worked in sports for a number of years, and then worked at Turner Broadcasting as an in-house attorney for a few years in Atlanta, uh, then in business development positions for Turner Sports and Play on Sports, and then ended up with Harper Collins in Nashville and worked in book publishing for about 10 years and recently took a jump to a company based in um, Holland, Ohio, Midwest Tape, Hoopla Digital, and Dreamscape Media. Um, they distribute entertainment and media to libraries, and they also um, produce original content, audiobooks, um, documentaries, and you know, short films and things of that nature. So um, I would like to end up in Southern California at some point, so I figured I'd reach out. And uh, we're we're uh, committed to Nashville for the next three years, but we're looking to move out west. I have four boys, ages 15, eight, six, and four. So we have a circus all the time. <laughs> That's great. Okay, and Sean Dellis, are you gonna be able to be on camera with us? I don't think hey, so. Hey, it's Sean. Um, are you able to hey, yeah, I'm a graduate of the Yeah, I, I'm actually working right now, so um, I can turn it on. But I'm, I'm, yeah. hey, hey, Sean, we're going to get uh, back to you during the Q&A uh, because we're having some audio issues. We'll, we'll get back. Um, I uh, work for... Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, back to our host for the evening, Adam Menlor. Take it away, Adam. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here. Excited to be a part of this great program tonight. Uh, I have to disclose something before we get started, which is that I am not an alum of Marquette University. So I hope that you still stay with me and don't drop off. But I am a fan of Marquette. Uh, so many great things about the great university that you guys have, uh, starting off with Dwayne Wade, going from Dwayne Wade to Jimmy Butler, going from Jimmy Butler to Doc Rivers. And we can go on and on about all the great alumni, even beyond basketball. But in all seriousness, excited to be here and excited to talk about a topic very close to my heart and close to my work, and that's mentorship. I am an entrepreneur. I run a few different businesses, but what I am really passionate about is this topic tonight. I have a podcast called 30 Minute Mentors. And what I do is I bring the most successful people in the country onto my show each week for 30 minutes. And we talk about how they got to the top and how anyone tuning in can get to the top as well. Because I believe so passionately about just how deeply a mentor can impact your life. And that's what I'm excited to dive into tonight with our esteemed panelists. So what I would love to do is kind of go one by one, have everyone who's on our panel introduce themselves. But if you can introduce yourself briefly, and as you're introducing yourself, if you can share with the audience how a mentor has impacted your career and why you think this topic tonight is so important. Do you want us to just, uh, I could start if uh, we can go alphabetically. And since I'm Andrick with A, I'll, I'll be the first one to go. Is we're that how make, we're gonna do this? Yeah, we're gonna make it a free for all because you know, full disclosure, I the way my screen is set up, um, I just see all the audience members. So I don't have a list of panelists uh, set up alphabetically. So I would just love everyone who's on our panel tonight to uh, jump in with this first question. So a uh, brief introduction, Joel Andrick, um, two days after graduation, I moved out to LA. So I've been in the entertainment business for 40 years, primarily working in the kids business. Uh, the one company I've worked for uh, for most of my career has been Saban Entertainment and he's the creator of the Power Rangers. So I've been an executive producer, producer on that series, uh, both as a feature film and on Nickelodeon. But to go back about how I felt 
I wanted to get reconnected with uh, Marquette is uh, when I was a student, I went to New York City and at the time looked up a Marquette graduate whose name was kind of ban bantied about uh, at Johnson Hall by the name of Jerry Jaskolsky. And Jerry was a graduate from the 60s or late 50s and was working as an associate producer at one of the soap operas, maybe as the world turns or one life to live, one of those in New York City. And I think I might have been a sophomore, junior, and I rang him up and he couldn't have been a nicer guy to embrace uh, me and my friend, to take us around to tapings, out to dinner, and really connected with us and uh, as students really showed us the professional look of what to expect once you get out of school. And Jerry eventually moved to Los Angeles and has be, uh, he passed away about I don't know, five or 10 years ago, but was always a mentor to any Marquette graduate looking to make their uh, break in the business. And in fact, when I first came out here, was one that opened his doors and tried to make the connections. And I felt like, hey, I want to do the same thing. I want to pay it forward. And that's kind of how I got involved with uh, doing what I'm doing with, with mentorship out here in LA. I love that. And that's going to be a key theme that we're going to hear tonight, which is the importance of paying it forward. And as you can tell from our panelists, everyone's here to help pay it forward. So hopefully our attendees can make as much as possible out of this event. And one thing I want to mention is anyone who has any questions, put them into the chat. And about midway through the hour, I'm going to either call on whoever asked the questions or just ask them directly so we can try to make this as interactive and valuable a session as possible. So I can go next. next. Yep, so I can go next. So as I said, I, I graduated um, arts and sciences in 91 with a political science degree and I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and so I moved, um, I'm from the East Coast, moved back East, uh, coached high school soccer, waited tables, had a blast for a couple of years, um, and then went back to grad school at DePaul. And so I have a master's degree from DePaul. Um, when I when I was done with that, I sort of flitted with, well, maybe I want to, you know, uh, teach high school history um, or maybe go to law school. So I flitted around for a couple more years and then uh, went to Marquette Law. Um, had no idea what, uh, what type of law I wanted to practice. All I knew was that, um, I did not want to be in a courtroom. Uh, my dad was an attorney and his mantra was avoid the courtroom at all costs. So that's what I grew up with. Um, and so at law school, um, I got involved in the sports law program. I um, love sports, um, played them growing up, like enthusiastic. I'm a huge Boston sports fan. Um, and so I figured if I was going to have to take uh, law school classes, I might as well take them in areas that interest me. Uh, and so that's what I did. And when it came time um, to interview for jobs, um, I was, it was down between the uh, National Labor Relations Board, which is the government agency um, that oversees the National Labor Relations Act, which um, governs collective bargaining, employee rights, et cetera, um, between private uh, companies and employees um, or uh, in-house uh, or at a law firm. And so I figured since most of professional sports was organized, I would go to the NLRB. Um, and interesting, um, <laughs> during my interview at the NLRB, uh, I told a, um, a little white lie or really kind of a big lie. Um, they really wanted um, people that wanted to litigate. And of course I wanted to stay outside a courtroom, but um, I was like, sure, I'd love to, can't wait. Just never took out to take those classes. Um, and so I told that that little fib. Um, and so, and it leads into who my, my, my first sort of uh, legal mentor was um, professionally. And that was um, the assistant regional attorney in Milwaukee at that region. Um, he he kind of called me on my, on my fib, <laughs> but thought, you know, had to really talk me into it and was like, you're going to love it. It's just like a chess match. You gotta just go in there and like, look at the moves and the moves you're gonna make. And he sort of really championed me and, and really sort of got me to embrace um, litigating. 
And, um, and who knew I liked it? It's a lot of hard work, but I actually really liked it. And I learned so much from litigating. Um, and to this day, I mean, he, I, go, I go to Milwaukee and I still, you know, have lunch with him. Um, he just played a huge important part. And I think what's really interesting is that um, when he's involved with um, Marquette or his brother-in-law or cousin-in-law is Marty Greenberg. So anybody that went to law school and sports law knows Marty, um, you know, he's pretty funny that he was like, I always have to talk about you. So it sort of worked both ways for me, but um, I'll never forget that he sort of pushed me out of my comfort zone, um, but knew that I would be successful and that I actually would, would like it. I love that. And something that I want to highlight for everyone in the audience tonight is when you develop a relationship with a mentor that is a true bond, that is a deep relationship that has meaning for both sides, for mentor and mentee, it will last you a lifetime. And the anecdote that Aaron shared is a beautiful example of that because even today, when you're in the same city, you're meeting, you're collaborating, it's a meeting of the minds. And again, I think that's another theme that any and every one of us who has had mentors in our lives can attest to. And with that, I'd like to turn to Allison. Uh, Allison, if you could introduce yourself. I know you're based in LA, based in New York, but not coming from LA or New York. So I don't want to confuse our audience. Yeah, let, let, I can clarify. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. I'm Allison Mahoney. I am from the Chicago area. I went to Marquette for undergrad, and then I moved to New York to attend law school at Fordham University School of Law, and I've lived in New York for the past 12 years. During the pandemic, I left and went to Snowmass and Aspen, where I have been based for the past six months, enjoying living in a ski town, which is something very new for me. Um, and right now I am in LA. Um, I love LA and ideally I would like to do work in both LA and New York. Um, I have been a litigator for the past decade. Um, I started off in big law at O'Melveny and Myers and then moved into social justice and public interest work. And um, when I was in law school, when I first went to law school, I actually had no intention of practicing law. I thought I was going to go into media or broadcast journalism or something like that right afterwards. And within my first semester of being in law school, I, opposite of Aaron, <laughs> fell in love with the idea of being a trial lawyer and working in criminal law and on social justice issues. And in law school, I met one of my mentors who is still a mentor to me now. He's a partner at the law firm that I worked at. Um, I ended up becoming his legal writing teaching assistant, and he, I feel like, really, really championed me um, when I was looking for jobs and has been an ongoing resource over the years. Um, and it's just really nice having someone whose career I really admire and who I trust, who I can go to um, to ask for advice about what to do, to bounce ideas off of without having really any shame or feeling like I need to hold back about what I'm asking about. Um, and then over the years, I have developed relationships with different mentors. Um, and I usually identify people who, first of all, I get along with really well, and there's just that natural ease in our relationship, and then whose careers I admire. Um, and so most of them have been lawyers. Um, now I'm in the process of starting a, a, a creative storytelling agency. It's inspired by the work that I've done. Um, so uh, storytelling for organizations that work on issues involving intimate partner violence, sexual abuse, child abuse, anything like that. Um, and so I'm part of a number of uh, communities with entrepreneurs and I'm leaning very heavily on them right now. I've also spoken with John a number of times. He's been incredibly helpful. Um, so I can't emphasize the importance of developing real relationships with people and then also giving back when you have the opportunity to. Um, I know I've worked with Marquette somewhat and I've also worked quite a bit with students from my law school. I, Allison, I love that. And I, I wanna highlight something that you mentioned in passing, but I think it's so important, which 
there are so many people who introduce themselves on this call coming from all different areas in their careers, coming from all different industries. I know a lot of people are coming from entertainment. We have some people who are coming from the legal profession and really all walks of life, all industries. But a, a key theme is that no matter what field you're in, no matter where you're working, there is going to be at a certain point of your career, a sense of loneliness. When you're an entrepreneur, you experience that sense of loneliness a lot more often. But when you're moving to a new city, there could be a sense of loneliness. Um, when you're taking on a new job, there could be a sense of loneliness, a sense of uncertainty. And I think that we may not have the courage to use the word loneliness. It takes some vulnerability, vulnerability to say, I need someone to bounce something off of, to share my personal and professional feelings with. And what, what I thought was so important about what you shared was having not only a mentor, but having a number of mentors that you have in your orbit that are essentially a community for you where you don't have this loneliness. And when you feel lonely, when you feel like I need someone to talk to, I can go and turn to these people. And similarly, you then turning around and serving as a resource to other people who might have that same feeling. So another really important theme when it comes to mentorship, really just being there for someone else. Um, Michael um, spoke a little bit about entertainment. You are the entertainment guy. Uh, when I say the entertainment guy, you might be the entertainment for the panel tonight, but Michael is an award-winning filmmaker. And with that, I would love for you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself and why, in your experience, mentorship is so important. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Schilf. I know a bunch of you guys, but not everybody. So welcome to uh, The New Faces. Um, I'm a writer, director, producer, and I am founder of Lunar Door, which is an independent production company. And um, I have three mentors. They all were from my academic experiences. I would say uh, when I was in high school, um, my theater teacher, Scott Seidel, he really helped me build confidence. Uh, I'm a writer, I'm a director, I'm not really an actor. I've done a little bit of that. To be on the stage at a young age with the spotlights on um, and to have somebody inspire, well, not really, just encourage you to jump in the deep end because it's terrifying, really. And um, he has no idea. What's one of the things that I think is really interesting about, about mentors, sometimes you have a relationship with that mentor. Maybe that mentor is continuing to open doors for you. Maybe you're working together in tandem, but sometimes the mentor doesn't really know they're a mentor um, because they, it might've just been one moment. And for me, it really was. It was, uh, I did something on stage as an actor. Uh, uh, the, the, the spotlight was on the action in a, a different part of, of the play. But what I was doing actually um, made the entire audience laugh. And uh, it was something I, my theater director brought to my attention privately later. And that was such a huge moment in my life because it helped me understand the who, okay, which is who I am. And it gave me the confidence to, to dive into something that's, you know, uh, telling your family, I want to go be a screenwriter in Hollywood is, is not the same thing as saying, I'm going to go be a lawyer on Wall Street, you know? And so, uh, but you have to believe in yourself first. So Scott Sada was the mentor that helped me learn who I am and to build confidence in me. And then when I was at uh, Marquette, uh, I have a double degree or double major in broadcasting and English literature. I have my degree, my BA in communication, school of communication. And I, did, I knew I didn't want to go into broadcasting, but I had gone too far into my credits to, to not continue. And when I started taking English literature classes, um, I was lucky to um, have an instructor a uh, professor by the name of C.J. Reibel, and, and I took two creative writing classes with him. And that was instrumental because, um, like Seidel, helped me understand who I am and gave me confidence. 
Rival helped me understand what it is I need to be focusing on for my career, which is writing. And so for him, I wasn't a great writer at that time, but I found something that gave me passion. Okay, so um, that was amazing. And I knew right away that, you know, the, I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew eventually that whatever my path was, it was going to be because of, of what I'm doing with my writing. I wanted to have creative control of content. Michael. And I, then Michael, I went to USC. Yeah, Michael, I, I think that that's so important for everyone in the audience to really take in. And I think something that's overlooked is a great place to start when it comes to this journey of how do you find a mentor? And this is going to be the next topic we're going to dive into, but you touched on it and led to a beautiful transition is we all already have a network. Even if you're graduating from school, you have a network and Michael, you shared a couple of the relationships you had with professors who've served as mentors for you. And you know, I believe that your network is a great place to start when it comes to trying to find a mentor. There are so many other ways that you can find a mentor. This is a topic I love discussing. I love writing about, I love speaking about, and I want to speak to each and every one of you about. So my next question to our great panel tonight is how can anyone who is here attending this event, find a great mentor, build their network. And in some cases, we've heard some of you who have had multiple networks, uh, excuse me, multiple mentors. What advice do you have? Put yourself in the shoes of our audience members. What are some practical, actionable tips that anyone here tonight can take to find a mentor and build their network? If you don't mind, I'd just say, ask yeah, i mean I, I really believe like like fear is probably the greatest uh intangible that stops us from achieving our goals and if you don't ask you've already failed and you know you might have to ask 10 people to get one yes maybe you have to ask 20 people to get one yes but guess what you'll get a yes Just ask. I, agree. I would agree with that also um and i think that if you can find a way to collaborate and work with them. That's also really helpful. Um, I've done that a number of times. Um, I'm also shameless about reaching out to people over LinkedIn, asking alumni to introduce me to people. Um, so to follow, up on, to follow up on Allison said, I think also, and, and Michael, I agree, you just have to ask. Um, we also don't know who people are going to know, right? So, uh, you know, uh, you just, it's, it's just sort of networking and asking. And then, you know, somebody who you would not know or think would know like somebody they, they do. And, and so I just think you just kind of have to get that ball rolling and it might not be that first person you ask, but that first person you ask might know the second person and the second person might know the third person. And it's, and you just got to keep going with it. Um, and people will surprise you. Yeah. It's more, it's, Oh, I agree with Aaron, but it's also, it's more than what you hear a lot, which is, it's who you know, it's who you know, it's who you know. Uh, that's not true at all. It's who knows you. You could know a thousand people. Guess what? You get a thousand people in your Rolodex or, your, or some kind of spreadsheet in your, in your computer. And if they're not thinking about you, you know nobody. If you know one person and they're thinking about you, guess what? That's going to make a difference. That's going to be a door that opens up. Okay. It's so part is, is asking and putting yourself out there and, you know, sending a message through LinkedIn, sending an email. Um, I wouldn't do a cold call, but there's lots of ways let's, to use social media here, Michael, to reach out to people. Uh, let's, take, but, let's take a little bit of a step back. So where should we start? I think that everyone shared really good advice that, you know, I'm, completely in agreement with. You need to ask. You can't be bashful. You need to ask and cast a wide net. But where do we start? Who do we ask? How do we figure out the best way to start? And I'd like to start with Joel. I 
say you start with the group here, you start with Marquette University, they have such a great resource, people like Dan DeWert, who leads the mentorship program at the university, is more than willing to make connections. You could start at LinkedIn, where you can search Marquette alums and reach out to them. They have a very special base here that there, there's something about this Marquette group, the DNA that we're always willing. And anytime I've reached out, it's like you have a special connection right away if you know that you went to Marquette. And then that initial introduction to that Marquette alum then starts the whole chain of networking to other people and outside of the Marquette uh, alumni group. But I think that the two places I would recommend is LinkedIn and start looking for Marquette alums on LinkedIn and start with the university, the resources that they offer when you're a student or even after you've graduated. I mean, look at this group here of what John has been able to build with uh, um, the social networking that we do on a, a monthly basis, so. To echo that, uh, there's a perfect example of that right in our panel. I didn't, Dan Fouts is in this panel, or he's not a panelist, but he's here with us right now. And I didn't know him at all a couple months ago. And he did exactly what Joel just explained. He reached out to me through LinkedIn. It was a couple back and forth messages. Um, and we set up a, it was my idea to set up a Zoom. We talked for an hour, right? We became uh, not only colleagues, but friends. And he opened up some doors for me. And, um, and, and that has helped me. And when he comes to LA, guess who the first person he's gonna call? Me, right? This is exactly what Joel just explained, and it's ha it's right here in front of you. And I just kind of want to add, uh, yeah. you know, um, and I think in Adam, it goes to something that you said to Allison, right, about being like lonely when you come to a new city. And and I think, um, and I think if you find like a community or or something else that you're passionate about outside of work or outside of of something, again, it's another opportunity to sort of meet people. Um, I mean, I've been fortunate that I that I you know have that community through the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, and I do like crazy things with them. But you just never, again, never know who you're going to meet. And I um I applied for um, a job with the NFL. I didn't get it, but I got my resume there, and I got an introduction, and I got an in-person interview all the way to the end because somebody that I knew that I ran with through this group works in the NFL, right? So you just, it's again, it goes to like, if you're, if you find some other outlet outside of work, right? And something that you're passionate about and something that you meet people, you, again, it's, it's people are just going to, you know, you're going to know people and, and they're going to introduce you or they're going to do something good for you because they respect you and they know you and they know your, your work ethic through a different way. The only thing I would add is um, I think it's important to stay in touch with people from jobs, internships, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, because that's another network. And um, peers from, from school are also a great resource. They might have a whole host of connections that might be helpful as well. I, I think I would, I, I, one more thing. Yeah. I think it's also important to always respond. Mm -hmm. uh, always everybody okay because like uh, you know, the more people know me than i know them <laughs> and when somebody comments on something on linkedin or or instagram or facebook or whatever even if i don't know them i always say thank you or um i appreciate that it doesn't take very much time first of all it's the decent thing to do but but also you don't know where that person is going to be in 10 years or 20 years that person might be the CEO of some company and they're going to remember that you treated them like a person. Yeah, I, I think there was so much good advice shared and I want to echo some of it and I want to build on it a little bit. Um, on my podcast, 30 Minute Mentors, uh, I had a guest on there and no, we don't talk about mentorship on every episode, but there was one episode where I had the producer um, and Michael will appreciate this. It was, the producer of The Hangover, the producer of American Pie, the producer of A History of Violence. And one of the themes that we explored was how to find a great mentor and the value of mentorship. And what really emerged from that conversation was the importance of not only trying to build relationships 
with traditional mentors, with people like Michael, like Joel, like Allison, like Aaron, who are established in their fields, who have the ability to help you right away with wisdom, with knowledge, with connections, but also to build relationships with your peers, to build relationships with people your age. Because as you rise within your respective fields, those are gonna be your colleagues. Those are gonna be the people that are, that are gonna come up with you. And those are gonna be connections that may be even more valuable than the connections you cultivate with the traditional mentors that you're gonna be seeking out as a result of this conversation. So what I really wanna implore everyone at this event tonight is to think about the concept of mentors more broadly than we do in a traditional sense. Think about mentors firstly, as not only a traditional mentor, someone who you have a very, very deep bond with, who's gonna take you under their wing, go out to coffee once a week or once a month, but to the point made by our panelists, try to build as many relationships as you can. Cast a wide net. I've coined a phrase called mini mentors. And a mini mentor, to the point Michael made, if you have a lot of people out there who know you, who you know, and who you can turn to in time of need, that's an incredible asset. And what I'm hearing tonight is that Marquette University is an incredible starting point for this because there are so many resources and there's such a spirit of generosity within the university and within the alumni network that anyone here tonight has all these resources at their disposal. And number two is don't just think about mentors in the traditional sense. Do they have white hair? But think about your colleagues. Think about people younger than you, to Michael's point. Someone 15 years younger than you, 20 years younger than you, could be someone who could be an incredibly valuable connection for you. So I think that everyone here has contributed so much. We have about 20 more minutes in this event, and I really want to encourage everyone again, if you have any questions for any of the panelists, please um, you know, throw them into the chat and I'll make sure to get to you. But uh, in the meantime, I, I want to put one more question out to our esteemed panel tonight. We spoke about why you should get a mentor. We spoke about how you can get a mentor. I think everyone understands why you should get a mentor. Hopefully people understand how you can get a mentor. Once you get a mentor, how can you optimize that mentor mentee relationship? And I'm going to start with Aaron. You know what? I, I think it's, it's engagement. I think it's, you know, staying engaged and staying involved. And that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, have coffee with them each week. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, you have to, you know, be in, you know, communication with them all the time. But I think it's just having that engagement and having that ability to kind of reach out and say, you know, hey, how are you? Or what's going on? Or, hey, I'm in town. Do you want to visit? You know, I think it's really just having that communication and, and just letting that person know you're thinking of them or, you know, you're not all, you know, it's, it's kind of today, this day and age with, you know, the pandemic and Zoom and everything else. I mean, it's, it's just having that, you know, human contact and, and engagement. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. I would agree. I think um, engagement is the most important thing. I mean, you have to have that, but, but also be open to uh, adapting and evolving, evolving really. Um, because that, that relationship is, when it begins, clearly, if it's a mentor mentee relationship, when it begins, <laughs> it's not equal exactly, but it can evolve to become a partnership. It can evolve to become, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a certain amount of, of, of professional um, um, equilibrium, really, you know, you, you, and so I think you don't have to necessarily be always wearing the mentor hat. It, it, it can change, and that's that's good. Mm -hmm. 
Allison or Joel? Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, I think that that as a mentee initially, you're reaching out and asking for advice and whatnot, but over time you start finding ways to provide information maybe to your mentor that would be helpful to them. And that also kind of changes the dynamic of the relationship over time. Um, so I think not 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 being stuck in a place of thinking, oh, I, I'm only going to this person for for advice or I'm only giving this person advice and evolve understanding that it can evolve, I think is a really good point. I think these uh, mentorships turn into lifelong friendships. There's a couple students that are now my friends and I follow them on Facebook and I'm so happy to see what they're doing. And one is living in New York City and living the good life there. And I, I remember when she first graduated. So it's that type of friendship that hopefully will be life lasting. Yeah. You shared so much wisdom with our audience. And there are a few themes that I think are really important for mentees to understand when you're cultivating a relationship with a mentor first and foremost it comes down to listening great leaders are great listeners and you're asking someone to take time out of their day to take time out of their life who presumably because you're seeking them out is very important and very busy and your baseline should be I'm going to listen. And I think that by virtue of listening, you're going to show an enormous amount of respect for your mentor. And you're also going to gain an enormous amount, but it really starts with listening. And that's easier said than done. But I think that anyone who's coming into this conversation and is interested in obtaining a mentor and wants to optimize that relationship should be committed to understanding and learning how to listen. Beyond that, I think it's also important to understand how to ask the right questions. Because going back to what we just talked about, you're taking up valuable time. Optimize it. Ask the right questions. Come in prepared. And going back to what each of our panelists shared, if you enter the relationship with an open mind, if you enter the relationship with a mindset that this can ultimately evolve, it will, and it will become a friendship and there will be this give and take. So I think that there has been so much good, good stuff shared. I want to ask, there, there was a question that uh, Dan asked, which was if we could ask uh, Dan O'Keefe and Pat Finn to talk about their mentor mentee relationship. Um, hi, yeah, I'm uh, Pat Finn. I'm 87 Marquette uh, Communications, and this is Dan. I'm Dan. I'm, as I said, graduated in December of last year. Right? I guess it's two years ago now. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I mean, um, Dan was kind enough to kind of ask me if this would be something I'd be interested in, and I'd jump at the chance for a lot of reasons. One, I'm a dad. Two people were there for me, especially at Marquette, and B, I think it's like kind of a it's like a Jesuit, it seems like it's, it's, it's a very Jesuit thing. And I like that. Um, also, I think I'm one of the only paid mentors, Dan. I don't know if that's true. I think I might be. Um, oh yeah, sorry, take a lot. Um, no, but it's, ours is different in the sense that, you know, it seems more like a, um, an easier step if you're gonna be a lawyer that you can talk about LSATs and law firms and different types of law and acting is certainly a, wide, a wider net um, but getting to meet someone like Dan, all of you guys have kind of said it. It's there's days where you talk about, you know, an audition or, or getting turned on for something, or, um, you know, should I do this monologue? And then there's days you just kind of talk about how was your weekend? And I think all of those things are really valid. And I think kind of like you said, listening is such a huge part on both ends. Um, cause it really, you, you don't know them as well and you get to learn them along the journey. Um, but to just be there for them, I think that, um, I think that's a great thing. And um, also just you grow as, as, as people. And I think, you know, Dan and I have like actual, like a relationship and, and uh, when he comes out to LA, I'm sure um, we'll go out for a cup of coffee or a beer or something. And I look forward to that. 
So that's kind of another magical thing about the mentor process. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, Pat, the the one thing that I didn't say is when I'm moving to LA, I am planning on moving into your house. So I hope you have the the room prepared. I have no idea what the address is not the same as the one. Um, Pat, can you share your address so we could all move into your house? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great idea because none of the kids are moving out. I don't know how that works. Where's Pat? So Dan, do you know where Pat lives? You want to put that in the chat for everyone? I will, yes. Okay. Consider that done. Appreciate it. We've, we've got about 10 to 15 minutes left, so I want to just open up the floor to any questions. Don't be bashful. Come on. You guys are golden eagles. I have some High expectation here. Or some of us are warriors. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let me uh, reinforce what Michael said a, a little while ago about answering people, just being nice to them. Not only is it civil and a nice thing to do, but those people are in a kind of a vulnerable situation where they're feeling the need to reach out and find somebody to help them. So for you to respond in any way to acknowledge them is a real humane thing to do. So I just wanted to reinforce what Michael said about that. Yeah, thank you, Paul, for, for doing that. Because you sometimes the smallest thing to you, it's nothing, or, or you're not even thinking about it. Okay, it goes back to what I said about my, my theater instructor in high school. All he did was say, that was awesome. Great job. Took him five seconds. And it literally put me on a path for the rest of my life to pursue a creative endeavor, which is terrifying. And I'm glad he did that, you know. Uh, but there might be someone who's about ready to give up. And it, you, we don't learn from our successes. We learn from our mistakes. We don't succeed because we do well. We succeed because we keep trying we fail and we fail and we fail and we fail and we keep failing and then eventually we do it right and then we move on right and so I think responding to people is it is is so important because you might be that one moment in that person's life where they decide to keep going or not keep going because of a simple response Michael I think you're right but I also think look at it like at at, at the beginning stages too like I do a lot of um speaking with the law school and the sports law students because I, I just do it but I, and I put myself in their shoes like 20 years ago I don't know that I could have cold called somebody I, I just don't think I could have right or sent the nice note or that was just not me at the time so if somebody's going to do that and send me a note and you know look me up on LinkedIn or do whatever like I I would just respond just because they've done that because I could never do that. So I just think again, it's, so it's not somebody who like maybe the last chance, but it's also just starting out. Like you put yourself back to where, where you know, in their shoes. Again, I never would have done it. So I will always respond. I will always have that conversation. I was always, you know, I get in trouble because I always say like, oh, call me, we'll do coffee, we'll do wine. And I'm like, oh yeah, you guys are students. I really can't say wine, but you know, but, but you do that, right? Because you were once in their shoes. So you should always like where, you know, I'm always been in someone else's shoes. Yeah, I just want to add one thing on this topic, which is it really doesn't take a whole lot of extra work mm -hmm. to just be nice. Treat other people with the level of generosity that you hope other people have when they're treating you. And that really doesn't take a whole lot of effort. It ultimately just comes down to your state of mind. And I think by virtue of everyone coming to this event tonight, we have this state of mind. We understand that it's about not only paying it forward, but being a part of a community and being a part of something that can allow us to get to where we all wanna be by chipping in and by ultimately playing the part that we can. Does anyone else have any questions or thoughts or comments? Uh, so much wisdom uh, from the audience, obviously from the panel, but we've got some remaining time and I would just love to hear any thoughts that anyone wants to share, if not questions. 
Just one suggestion I had, and I already wrote it to Dan, but I'd love to repeat this kind of uh, uh, a Zoom call uh, or the seminar for the Marquette students so they can listen to what they should be doing once they graduate. So Dan, I don't know if we would be able to arrange something like this, but I think it'd be a really valuable Zoom session for us to maybe do something in the new school year uh, as one of the uh, seminars that you, I know you do ongoing uh, different uh, groupings with the mentors and we'd be more than happy. I'm, I'm speaking for everyone uh, on the panel, but be more than happy to uh, duplicate this uh, for the Marquette students. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head, Joel, and that's to give this opportunity for students and, you know, the experience that we have through Marquette Mentors and working with students now for more than 10 years, more than 800 students, um, is what was mentioned earlier, ask and listen, be engaged, be proactive, and, you know, looking at Aaron and John and Joel and Pat and so many of you who I've never met but know of you, um, the opportunities that you're giving these students to say, I want to help. All you have to do is ask, be proactive, separate yourself from others, establish relationships. Don't just ask for a one-off. All the information here is just um, phenomenal. And I just want to give a plug for a new online platform that we are in the, um, we are doing a pilot right now, but I'll get the link over to you, John, if I could. And that is the Marquette Career Network, which is basically an online mentoring platform. And of course, if you can establish a relationship with somebody that you feel is really important and um, you want to pursue a conversation more than one time, you can absolutely do that or you can just do a one off. And um, it's a great way for students to reach out and again, just get more acclimated to understanding how phenomenal this Marquette network is. So um, we'll get you that information. And if anybody would consider joining that, it would be terrific. Yeah, I appreciate, Joel, you speaking for all of us. I think it's an excellent idea. We've been talking about the big ideas today, but uh, I think students could really help with some of the smaller details like execution. You know, for example, uh, it's, it's great to ask, how, it's great to listen, but also how do you ask? And it's way better to be brief. You know, we are busy and we wanna help and we wanna, we wanna, um, we wanna give back, but I don't really want a, an email that's two letters, two that, you know, that's like five paragraphs or, or a letter. It, it, so things like that are, are also valuable to, to understand is, is less really is more and be concise and clear and, and direct. And Adam, if we're going to do this again, uh, we expect you to be the moderator. You did a great job. <laughs> so even really though you're not a Marquette graduate, now you're, you, we've reeled you in. So uh, <laughs> no escaping us. You know what? I don't want to cut into the hour we have here, but maybe offline, if any of you guys can tell me how I can get an honorary doctorate, I would love to know. <laughs> I do you, need to, you need to talk to Sissy, and all it takes is a, a checkbook, and we can arrange that, right, Sissy? Uh, Joel, did, uh, Joel, my audio is breaking up. Did you say that you were going to write a check on my behalf? <laughs> <laughs> You're this. Uh, uh, I do see. I do see Keith has his hand up. Keith, we have a couple minutes left, so uh, we'd love to know if you have a question or any thoughts. Keith, you're on mute. Keith, all right, can we hear you? Yeah, I had my uh, hand up. Uh, yeah. I was just gonna give an example to the young people who are looking for mentors um, to have the habit of listening and not contradicting, not being afraid to, to exp express an opinion about the advice you're getting. I had about uh, 15 years ago when I was uh, running my own company, uh, Vision for Media, um, someone who was referred to me who was a writer. And um, so I got, got a hold of him and uh, I had I already had the script that he had written and um, it, it needed a lot of polish. And so um, uh, when he called, when I called him, he said, well, I suppose you're going to tell me that uh, just like everybody else, you probably read the first three pages and that was as far as you got. And I, I kind of chuckled and I said, well, maybe, maybe you ought to hear what I have to say. I said, I read the whole script and I realized a lot of people only read the first five or 10 or 12 pages, but I felt you needed the help. 
And I started quoting from the different pages. And, and he said, oh my gosh, you actually read it. And I said, yes, I did. And I said, I do have a bit of advice. What kind of writing classes have you taken? And he said, well, I didn't think I needed them. And uh, I said, well, I, have, I do advise you to uh, enroll in a local university sure. and, and take a good writing class. Because I said, that's going to help you with your writing technique. Because there's certain things that I told him about his writing that I felt he, he said, oh, OK. I don't know if I have time for that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. that was the end, the end of end of my Keith, mentoring for him. Keith, that's a great anecdote. And I think it beautifully illustrates the value of not only seeking out a great mentor, but being a great mentor. And on the topic of time, we have three minutes left. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So in our remaining three minutes, I would love to just do a rapid round with our panelists very, very quickly. Any final thoughts? Starting with Michael. Oh, you did. Sorry, guys. I, I kept seeing John's. <laughs> if you're not, unmute your, or mute yourself. Um, I think <laughs> one of the great things about having a mentor is it is, is that person can help you believe in yourself. Um, it's not always about advice. It, 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 it's you. Sometimes you just need a cheerleader, you know. And and, and for me, it's my wife. Uh, and I feel very fortunate. I'm incredibly grateful and blessed to have somebody that that has all. Whenever I've felt like, you know, maybe thrown in the towel, uh, it, that I I needed that person. I really did. And, and she was right there. And, um, you know, you might not be lucky enough to have a spouse that can be that, but a mentor could do the same thing. I love it. Aaron. You know what? I, I, I'm moving away just a little bit from, from the mentor. It, it's, it's on Michael's thing about championing. You just never know who's going to champion you and, and, and how you conduct yourself and how you work and how you present, you know, all of that is being watched. I mean, I say that I'm in an industry and it's labor relations for the entertainment industry. It's incestuous. It's a very small sort of group and we all sort of try to poach other people. And I've been so fortunate that, um, you know, Sony poached me from, from Fox. They like waited for my contract to come out and to finish it. And then I, and then NBC pushed me from, from, um, from Sony. And all of it is, is because you know, people see you and they see how you work or they hear good things and they check out, you know, they ask others about you in the industry and what do you think and how is that person? And so it's kind of, you know, a little bit away from the mentorship part, but you just kind of always, you just never know who's going to champion you. And so you have to like put yourself out there and you have to put your best foot out there and always kind of think people are going to be looking at me. People are going to be watching me. How do I want people to see me? Allison. I have two thoughts. First of all, I think it's really important to always be professional and as polished as you can. So be polite, respond to emails, don't be sloppy and how you respond and overly casual. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, and that applies whether you're the mentor or the mentee, um, is to be authentic. And I find that my relationships with either mentees or mentors has grown much deeper when I'm just authentic about what's actually happen happening in my life instead of being a machine that's just focused on where is this relationship going to get me. Um, because he's offered to write a large check to <laughs> name the Mendler Institute at Marquette University, yeah. give the final thoughts to Joel. Uh, I don't know if it's the Midwest DNA. I grew up in uh, the Midwest. I schooled there, but I've been out here and I still, when they say, where, I'm, where am I from? I still say Wisconsin and my wife yells at me. She goes, no, you're not. You're from Ohio. That's where I was born. So I don't know. It's that Midwest DNA, the Jesuit tradition. It's just something that I feel like we're paying it forward. We're trying to make the world a better place. I mean, the, coming out of this COVID situation, the world is so toxic. I can't watch the news anymore. Being a mentor and helping someone fulfill their dreams and their aspirations, it's like we all need to do this. We need to make the world a better place. And 
this is my way of doing it. Great stuff. Well, one of the ways I'm doing it. (laughs) I hope I can do it in other ways, but one way. I I think it starts with events like these and hopefully we can all get together in person sooner than later. Wanted to thank everyone who participated tonight. Thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to all of our attendees. Thank you to Marquette University for putting this on. Thank you, John, for facilitating everything and wish everyone a great rest of the night. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam, Adam for applause, leading us. Everybody. Yay. Yes. Thanks, John. Take care. Bye, everyone.